and welcome to today's um, AB60 press conference. Uh, I want to start off by introducing myself. My name is Esther Kim, and I am currently the Immigrant Rights Project campaign coordinator here at the Korean To my left, we have Connie Choi, South Attorney with Asian Americans with Latin Americans. The reason we're gathered here today is to break down some of the proposed regulations set up by the Department of Motor Vehicles um, for Assembly Bill 60. I'll go over a brief introduction of the bill, and Connie will go over some details as well as a brief timeline. And then I'll further provide information on the services we will provide here at the Korean Resource Center. We'll keep the program relatively short so as to answer any questions anyone in the audience might have. So AB60 was passed late last year in the California legislature. Uh, immigrant rights advocacy groups have been working tirelessly to bring back the driver licenses for all. The last time an undocumented person was able to drive with a legitimate driver license had been in the late 1990s before the expiration of their licenses. After over a decade without the proper means to drive safely on our California roads, AB60 was passed and subsequently signed by Governor Jerry Brown, along with AB4, or more commonly known as the Trust Act in late 2013. Uh, though not a document that can be used for official federal purposes, the AB60 licenses will give many people a chance to drive safely on the road without fear of persecution. Advocacy groups have been working alongside the DMV to, create a, to help create a set of regulations that are fair and equitable, but also take in, takes into account that many of our community members cannot provide some basic documents of identification. The regulations set up by the DMV would have to be inclusive of those that have difficulty getting certain kinds of documents. Taking those things into consideration, the DMV held public hearings in Northern and Southern California earlier this year to gauge the concern of some community members, as well as to gain insight into what is and what isn't available to those who wish to obtain an 8060 driver license. The DMV recently released a set of documents that they would use to prove the identity and residency of 8060 driver license and identification card applicants. So I'll turn it over to Connie to discuss those further. And thank you so much, Esther, for having us today. Um, once again, my name is Connie Choi, and I'm a staff attorney at Asian Americans Advancing Justice. And along with the Korean Resource Center, we've been doing advocacy ever since the passage of 8060 to really ensure that the driver's license that will be issued starting January 1st of next year. Um, it's really going to be um, workable as well, um, uh, work, workable for our community members. Um, uh, and, and I think for us, what we're really concerned about is making sure that um, driver's license um, applicants for AB60 uh, will be able to do it in a way that's um, uh, fair um, to what they have and also in, in line with the documentation that they already have. Um, so the DMV actually issued regulations last month on May 9th um, that really laid out some of the documentation that they're going to want to see along with the application. Um, and there are two um, types of documentation that a person needs to provide. So number one, they need to show identity documents. Um, and as well as number two, they need to show that they have residency here in the state of California. Um, and um, for those, um, uh, you should, everybody should have a chart that was released by the DMV that really kind of outlines um, kind of what the process, the draft process is going to look like. Uh, right now, public comments um, are being welcomed by the DMV until June 23rd. And here in Los Angeles, there's going to be um, a hearing on the 24th. Um, so I uh, highly welcome community members to come and, and to speak out, um, as well as um, they are also uh, soliciting uh, comments on a hotline as well. And so the number that people can call is 916-657-6469. So I'll repeat that um, again for those um, who need it. Um, so I'm really what I'm going to do is go through this chart. Um, and please feel free to um, uh, interrupt me if you have any questions. Um, but let me just go over it, and then uh, I'll field questions. So um, for with regards to identity requirements, there's four options that people can choose um, or can provide identity for. 
Um, option one is, I guess, the most preferred. And then option four, um, down to option four, um, people would be subject to secondary review. So for option one, um, acceptable documents would be a valid foreign document that's um, electronically um, verifiable by the DMV. And um, unfortunately, with regards to this list, there are very few documentation as of this point that would um, qualify. For option two, um, a person would need to provide two of the following. They would need to provide um, the valid approved foreign document, a valid foreign passport, a federally, uh, federally uh, issued government ID, with a current photo, or a valid consular ID. And specifically with the Korean community, um, we believe that this is going to be a fairly difficult process for many undocumented Koreans um, because uh, uh, the Korean consulate does not issue a valid uh, consular ID at this point. Um, many Koreans have, have lived here in the U.S. for a long time and so will not have valid um, uh, unexpired passports. Um, and as well as, um, uh, I think, the federal government issued ID card, um, a lot of people don't have as well. And so we anticipate that uh, we're doing some advocacy to ensure that more documentation will be part of this option as well. So option three, um, what ex uh, a person would need to provide two of the following. A expired uh, foreign passport that's been issued since 2005, a foreign birth certificate that's either been um, issued within the last six months of their application or has a certification and is translated by the consulate itself or once again a federally issued government ID card. Um, so uh, with regards to this as well, I, we do believe that there's going to be some difficulties so we plan to submit comments um, that really reflect some of the challenges that the Korean community will face. Um, and lastly, um, option four is secondary review. So if any um, applicant does not have any of the documentation that's outlined in the first three options, they do have the opportunity to go to the DMV, submit their documentation, and basically provide a number of different documents that verify their identity. Um, and as you can see, some of that includes um, school records, so their college transcript, school transcript, um, their, some of their immigration um, petitions or documentation, so an I-589 asylum application, um, their F-1, M-1, or J-1 documentation, uh, so this would be for foreign students, exchange students, people who are vocational students, um, a marriage or divorce um, documentation, their foreign driver's license, as well as their income return. And this is not an exhaustive list, but this is something that the DMV has already, already issued and stated that they intend to be part of the acceptable documentation process. Um, we are still trying to find out more information about the secondary review process, um, um, and, and we'll be doing some more advocacy of that. Um, secondly, as I mentioned, uh, uh, an applicant would need to provide residency documentation. And so there's actually quite an exhaustive list here, as you can see, which includes rental agreements, deeds, mortgage, mortgage bills, home utility records, school and medical records, etc. cetera. Um, and um, the, an, an individual need to, would need to provide um, one, doc, one piece of evidence with regards to their residency as well. Um, with regards to the entire process, uh, we have until January 1st, as I mentioned, of next year to really um, advocate with the DMV as well as um, the Department of Homeland Security, which has to ultimately approve of the look of the license. Um, and so along with Korean Resource Center, um, we'll be continuing on with our advocacy uh, with regards to that. So I will just put uh, comments short. Thank you. Sure. Um, so as I mentioned, um, the common period will be open until June 23rd, 5 p.m. Um, they will be accepting written comments as well as oral comments through a hotline. And the hotline um, number is 916-657-6469. Um, and there, are, there will also be a public hearing here in Los Angeles on the 24th from 10 to 4 p.m. And the address will be at the at 320 West 4th Street in Los Angeles. Great, thanks. Um, so, in light of all this um, AB60 regulation that's coming through and 
um, going through the works, the Korean Resource Center is going to be providing some services to our community members. So we will have a hotline available for our community members to call bilingually either in English or Korean. And that phone number is 323-680-5725. Again, that's 323-680-5725. In addition, we'll be hosting um, two different workshops, one on Monday, June 16th, here at the Korean Resource Center from 6 to 8 p.m. And um, the very next day on Tuesday, June 17th, in Orange County um, at 309 North Rampart Street in Orange, California, 92868 at the same time. So that's at the Orange County Labor Federation. Um, <clears throat> During the workshops, we will be discussing options that are laid out in the documentation matrix, the ones that um, Connie just discussed. And we'll also be talking about what is and what isn't available to our community members. Um, as for the why, we want our community members to be informed about what's available to them. But at the same time, we need the voices of our community members. The proposed re regulations are just a draft, and DMV needs to listen to what our community needs. In order to create a fair and just set of required documents, our community needs to come together and organize. Thank you. Look, you need to look through. It's not finalized yet, right? Okay. It's not finalized yet. Okay. So, as for Korean Americans who probably do not qualify for all these prerequisites, mm -hmm. what what do they? Do? But first of all. How long do you think it, it, do you anticipate the DMV, DM, uh, DMV to actually issue once an applicant submit all these forms <clears throat> by next year? Um, so they anticipate that um, it's going to be the same processing times as a normal applicant would, um, which I believe is about two to three weeks from what I understand. Um, uh, the DMV is right now ramping up um, pretty significantly. Um, they're opening up new offices as well as hiring new staff in order to accommodate the inflow, anticipated flow of applicants um, that will be coming through their doors. Any anticipated or guess the number of applicants will be submitting it within no. just Southern California, California, is that this area? Um, that I'm not too sure about, but um, when you look at the undocumented Asian American population here in Los Angeles, there's 180,000. 80,000? They say it was documented and undocumented? Undocumented. Undocumented. Okay. So as for Koreans who actually do not fall in categories of either requirement sections, how do they go about getting the license actually? I mean, that's why we have a proposed these community forums so that we can find out what, what documents are available to our community members and what aren't, so that we can um, give proper recommendations to the DMV. So what kind of advocacy, you know, message that you want to bring out to the DMVs or Homeland Security as for that matter? Um, well, I mean, this is just the um, opinion of myself, but I think with regards to how this matrix is proposed, it's actually quite unworkable for not just Korean Americans, but a lot of Asian Americans, um, because <clears throat> a lot of uh, the accepted documentation is not something that is provided by these countries. So for example, as I mentioned, there isn't a consular ID that's provided by the Korean consulate here in Los Angeles or in San Francisco. Um, with regards to federally issued uh, government IDs, um, very few people have that. So if, for example, that would be like a military ID, right? And a lot of people don't have access to that because they're not part of the military. Um, and then, you know, lastly, with regards to kind of the foreign passports only being accepted, um, if it's expired, only accepted um, starting 2005, you know, as, um, a lot of undocumented Korean Americans have come here even before that time. So how do you make that process workable for those who have lived here for a long time? So there, we've already identified some issues that we see um, that will be challenges um, for undocumented Korean Americans to apply for the AB60 license, which is why I think we're convening this press conference to really ensure um, that you know, people come out, you know, make comments, and say, look, this is not going to be workable for us if this is what the status quo is going to be. And so you need to either broaden their requirements, um, accept more different types of documentation, et cetera. And as for uh, interview with 
possible interview with the investigator from DVMB. Um, is there any slightest chance that they, you know, the applicant might get reported? <laughs> So we're doing advocacy with regards to that. The DMV has stated that they um, this will be a confidential process for applicants, um, but what we're trying to do right now is have them state that publicly, um, because um, I think a lot this will be a deterrent um, uh, for a lot of undocumented um, Asian Americans, Korean Americans, um, who want to apply but don't know that the documentation that they provide will be accessible by the Department of Homeland Security. So um, that's something that. Um, we're still working on right now. But we anticipate that it is going to be um, a fairly confidential process. We just want to make sure that um, it's 100% going to be. Are you sure about Korean consulate does not issue the ID? Yeah, they issue. They issue, okay. They, they issue um, national identification cards, th that I under um, understand, but I don't think they provide. No, they, they issue um, the consulate, consular ID for Really? Yes, yeah, since 2006, I guess. Oh, it's not very active. It's not really popular anymore. But it, it, I, yeah. Oh. As far as we understand, the issues. It's incredibly difficult to obtain those IDs. Is it? Mm -hmm. Is it? Mm -hmm. Especially to, to for obtain the undocumented or. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not that hard. For the undocumented population. Yeah, this is green area or old, whatever expired ID, like passport and. We suspect that it will be especially difficult for some parts of our the undocumented Korean population to obtain these um, these IDs because it goes along with the lines of obtaining an, um, a renewed passport, which is also really difficult for some of our community members to obtain. Yeah, I mean, from what I understand, it wasn't a possibility really, and it's very difficult for. Korea. Uh, folks in general, not just from the Korean consulates, but a lot of Asian consulates to obtain. And so um, we anticipate that there's going to be, um, it's not going to be a workable um, option for people to provide or documentation to people. How does the city of LA accept the, the Korean consulate for their like, DMV bills and gas? The, when they, when they the city their, of LA? Yes, when they open their um, like DMV, uh, not DWP or the gas account, the city of LA accept the Korean consulate. So that's something that yeah, we'll that's probably something, have to yeah, look into. Yeah. Thank you for raising that. You know, uh, so many Korean undocumented persons here, um, mm -hmm. I know they pay a fee to a broker and they go to actually state of Washington to get their license issued from the state of Washington. You know, do you know about that? It, it's happening because their regulation is a lot uh, less strict than in California. So as long as they can provide the residence proof, I mean, the, evidence of uh, residency in the state of Washington and they get their uh, driver's license and just come back and drive around here. So. Yeah, there's, um, we've heard of instances like right. that in the community where, you know, not just in Washington but also in New Mexico, New Mexico. Um, people have been going to get driver's licenses, which is why we advocated that the AB60 really be passed here um, because we think that all Californians will be safer if everybody is tested, insured, and licensed. Right. Um, and so, um, one thing that we are trying to clarify with the DMV is whether um, a, a person who was able to obtain such a license can use that as identification purposes um, for the AB60 license, but that's still um, up in the air. Um, or are they exchange their other state license to California license? Um, I think you'd have to do a new application process, yeah, in order to get a California do you know how long is actually once is the uh, AB uh, license issued? What's the duration or expiration date on the new licenses? Will be? Do you know? I think the proposed expiration um, time is five years. Five years. Yeah, the standard is ten years for a regular applicant. Where are the names, uh, spellings of your names on camera? Sure. Okay. Uh, it's Esther Kim. That's E S T H E R. Last name Kim K I M. Okay. Connie Choi, C O N N I E C H O I. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Sure. Can I say a copy of that form? Sure. I'll hold it up for you. I'll hold it up for you. I'll hold it up for you.
경로도 괜찮은데 일단 
verify the and to work out what those processes are. Well, then, then, so we're suspecting that right now the identification has to be compliant. Which basically means that anybody who the oil is actually needs to for the drivers and stuff like that. There needs to be a number of identifying markings on it that show that this person is not allowed to use this documentary um, card as um, ID. Um, and so they're in negotiations with DHS right now. And unfortunately, what happened is that the first proposal that was submitted to the state was denied by DHS. Um, and so we're doing advocacy to ensure that whatever the markings look like will lead to increased discrimination as well as targeting, right, in the workplace, North Right. The city of Orange. Or, or they can use their other city's ID as a proof of their ID card. That I don't know, but I think you know if you want to drive in California, you should have a driver's license. And so we would advocate that um, you know if they are eligible, that people come out and apply for specifically having a driver's license. Um, I think uh, we are doing advocacy right now with the DMV in order to ensure that other um, driver's license from other states are eligible as a form of identity. Um, um, uh, documentation. No one has to say that in six hours. So but they should at least be there for a couple minutes to hear what other people say. Thank you. 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 Thank you.